Welcome back. This is part two of my series on building a Stuart Model 10V vertical steam engine. And in this episode, we'll be building the box bed. Uh, if we look at the overall uh, diagram for the engine, uh, trying to figure out where to start is always interesting, but I thought it would be good to start from the bottom and uh, work our way up as we go through the engine. So number 30, which is the box bed, is a good starting point. So we go through to the uh, individual drawings for the parts. It's part number 30. And this one is rather interesting because if we look at the uh, drawings here, there's not a whole lot of dimensions on this drawing. They're basically showing that there's four holes that we're going to have to put on and tap 7BA. Those will hold the studs that uh, mount the sole plate, but other than that, there's actually no dimensions. Uh, it's just showing basically a box. So, it's interesting, got to figure out where to start here. If we look at the actual part, what we'll see here is we've got a casting, and the bottom of this is going to mount onto whatever uh, mounting board or mounting plate we want to surface we want to put the engine onto. We've got bosses out here to mount a couple of studs on. They didn't even talk about the location or the dimensions of those holes. I think that's up to you, depending on how you want to mount it. We've got some hints here in the casting for where the uh, mounting the holes for the studs are going to be. And then we've got a top surface here that the sole plate's going to mount onto. So the only surfaces that really matter is the bottom surface we want very smooth so that it, when it sits down onto the mounting place that it's solid. And we're obviously going to want a smooth surface for the top for the sole plate to mount to. And we're going to want those two to be parallel. Uh, first problem I can see when mounting this in the mill is that we've got these two uh, pieces from the runners that are definitely going to be getting in the way here uh, and keep us from mounting it properly. I think the easiest way to remove those is going to be just to uh, put it lightly in the vise and uh, use a file to take those off. So let's go over to the vise. This is a casting, so it could be a little fragile. We don't want to apply too much pressure. I've got the soft jaws in the vise here. And just going to snug that up enough to hold it in place and get out the file. And let's see what it takes to take those two protrusions off. There, now that we've got all the protrusions removed, uh, we should be able to have that as a flat surface. We'll want to take a look at those in a minute. Uh, with sufficient skill, I suspect you could actually do this work entirely with a file, but my filing skills really aren't that good, so I'm going to do this in the mill. But the next question is going to be which surface do we want to mount first in the uh, mill? Do we want to put it uh, with the bottom down and take care of the top surface and then flip it? Or do we want to do the bottom surface first and then flip it? So what I want to do at this point is find out which uh, of these is going to be the most solid when I try to clamp it. And for that, a uh, surface plate will be quite handy because it's... Uh, a good smooth planar surface. So let's take a look and uh, see what we want to do next. I found that a granite surface plates, it, plate is useful for all kinds of things. Uh, in addition to using it for layout, which is what I'd originally purchased it for, it is great for just checking to see how flat something it is. You can put some sandpaper on it and it gives you a good flat surface for smoothing things up or polishing. 
In this case, I want to find out uh, if both of these sides of the casting are really as uh, good and flat, and I'll be able to clamp them. So if I put the bot put it bottom side down, and I hold it here, and I'm assuming that when I clamp it, I'm going to have some blocks mounting on the two ears because I have to have access to the cutter for the top surface. That is really solid and it's not rocking at all. If I put it this way, I'm going to have to figure out how to clamp it. But first thing I notice is it actually has some, there's a bit of warpage to it. Uh, I don't know if you can see in the video, but it rocks. If I try to push it down, it rocks back and forth, and that just, I don't feel good about trying to mill it if it's rocking that way, and I don't know how, I don't know if it's going to go that way or if it's going to go this way. So I think what we'll do is when we mount it in the mill, we'll put it down, bottom side down first, get the top side smooth and planar, then we can flip it over and uh, mill the bottom side. So now over to the mill. Okay, we're over at the milling machine, and to hold the box bed down, I'm going to actually put it on some one, two, three blocks to raise it up a little. That'll make it a little easier to clamp, and we're just going to use some standard uh, milling clamps. Put the T-nut on the stud for each side. Clamps in place, and I think a medium length will work well. We want that close to level, but angled down slightly. on those. Now since this is strictly in compression down onto the cast iron and it's got a solid base underneath that, we can tighten it down nice and snug. That's not going to go anywhere. Put a half inch end mill into the milling machine. can't see uh, in the camera, but I've got my safety glasses on. We'll take this down. And let's get it close to one end to start with. And we'll lower it down just to touch off. Actually, that's looking like a pretty good depth of cut right there. Let's set the zero on the depth. Clamp that, and now we will take the top edge off. Let me zoom in a bit so you can watch the cutting. We're at about 700, 750 RPM. Oh, 
Okay, and there's some of that warping that we were seeing before. Turn that off. It's cutting in nicely at the ends, but in the middle we're not cutting all the way through. I'm going to loosen that up and drop it about another five thousandths. And we'll take that back. Again, we're not trying to take a lot of material off. Just trying to get a good smooth surface all the way across the top. That looks good. Actually, we can just take this around. Turn that off. Let's brush it off and see how it looks. Looks good. Feels really smooth. Uh, I think we've got that pretty good. Let's go put it back on the uh, granite block and see if it sits good and solid and flat and uh, see how that's looking. And we're back with the surface plate. Uh, we'll put it face down. You'll remember the last time it was rocking rather badly because of some warpage there. Press down, slides, but it is rock solid there, perfectly flat. That's what I'd expect after it came out of the milling machine. And now when we clamp it down uh, in the milling machine face down, flat against the block, and go through and plane this surface off, we will end up with two surfaces that are absolutely parallel to each other. And again, we're just trying to take enough material off of here to get a smooth, clean surface on the top. We don't want to thin it out more than necessary. And there were no dimensions for it, so we'll do that. Next question is how to clamp this down. Uh, I don't want to clamp it from these ears because if I'm doing that, I'll be putting force down. Well, first of all, I can't clamp it on the top because I've got to be able to mill the surface. Uh, there are some, you can, I think you can see there's some ledges on the inside and from other suggestions I've seen I think the solution for clamping this will be to make a small plate that just fits inside and that I can bolt down through the center and that will hold it down and allow us to clamp that, hold it down firmly to the uh, milling table and be able to mill the top surface. I'm not going to show putting that piece on the film, but I'll show you the uh, piece when I'm finished making it. And then we'll take it back and we'll be able to mill the top piece. I measured the inside dimensions of the uh, casting, and it looks like in the inside and the bottom it's about an inch and a quarter wide by about two and a half long. I found a thin piece of uh, plate steel that I had, sheet steel, uh, cut that to the dimensions and drilled a 3 8 hole in the center for the clamp on the uh, milling table. And once I did that, I just worked at it with a file a bit until uh, it fit. Didn't want too much room on the sides because I wanted a good clamp, but it fits loosely. And more importantly, if I look at the bottom, I think as you can see here, it's fitting snugly all the way around and so when I put this down and simulate clamping it down with a bolt in the center 
it holds it very solidly and it doesn't rock at all. So I think that's going to hold it really well in the milling machine. Let's go back to the milling machine and get that mounted and uh, finish off the bottom surface. We have a similar to setup to what we used before. I've left uh, one of the clamping bolts here in the center of the table with a T-nut. I'm going to put the one, two, three blocks to each side. This is going to give the casting a solid place to rest. I've got the uh, clamping fixture in the center there. I'll put this down and we'll tighten the nut up. Okay, that's very solidly in place. Bring this over to make sure. Yeah, and again, and it's sitting on the same plate that it was bef uh, before, so this is going to be the same height. That's a good confirmation there. And turn on the milling machine. And loosen the table clamp. Bring that down where it looks like a good depth. Lock the head so that it doesn't chatter. We can go look at that on the surface plate, but I think that is looking pretty good. This is looking pretty good. I can still see some milling marks on both sides. So I've got some 400 grit uh, paper I'm going to put just on the flat surface of the block. See if we can get rid of those marks. As I noted at the beginning, this is my first attempt working with uh, iron casting, so I'm kind of learning as I go. See if a little water, this is wet dry paper, see if that helps to keep the paper clean. It's not quite as important for the bottom piece, it's already flat and any low spots aren't really going to matter, but for the top surface it's actually going to be visible. I want that to look really good, so I'm practicing first on the bottom piece. One of the best pieces of advice I've seen uh, in multiple places is pay attention to the details when they don't matter because then you'll get in the habit of doing things right for when they do, and I sounded like some good advice. So basically, I want to try and make every part of this look as good as I can.
And I hope this will show up well on the camera, but this is what I was looking for. This is a very smooth surface. You can just see the sanding marks because I was using 360 paper, but that's very smooth and clean. I'll polish it up a little more with some finer sandpaper when uh, setting it up for the final assembly, but this is looking really good. Uh, the one thing left, I don't know if you can see it here, I was definitely feeling it when I was sanding because there's still some rough edges, so we'll take that over to the vise and clean those up with the file. Again, I've got the uh, soft jaws because I really don't want to risk cracking this uh, or marring the surface. I just want to hold it in place enough for some light filing. And just trying to clean up the edges there, remove any sharp spots so it's as much my feel as anything else. Get the inside edge there. I think this file may be a little big for doing the insides. Get this outside edge. I am gaining a lot of appreciation for everyone else that puts their uh, machining videos on YouTube. It's a lot of work just going through and setting up the camera for each shot. Uh, I haven't even started editing this yet, but just getting the camera placement nice so that you can actually see what's going on isn't always easy. Uh, I, again, appreciate anybody's feedback on... Uh, whether this is helpful and what I can be doing to improve the quality of the videos. This is, I'm new at this. Okay. I think we're going to need a round file for part of that. It's an inside radius. You can probably see this side better if I do it this way. Again, this is, this is all just cosmetic, but in addition to being a running steam engine, I'm wanting this to look good. It's going to be a bit of a showpiece, I hope. And already, just through, with this little experience on the first piece, I am seeing how much time goes in. I haven't been watching the clock while we do this, but I... Uh, I'm getting the feeling that I've spent a lot more time with the sandpaper and the file than I had with the actual milling machine. Let's get a rounded file. Clean up these inside radiuses. So some of that flash there. That was exciting. Turns out that I'd had the extension cord that I used for the uh, camera and the audio input uh, sitting on the ground under the bench and as I was doing all of this filing on the uh, box uh, bed there uh, little bits of uh, iron filings were falling into the plug on the connector and when they built up enough the whole thing shorted out in what was a lot more spectacular in the shop than it was just what you saw there on the video but it was pretty impressive uh, I hadn't realized that I'd lost the audio when that was happening, so there was no audio recorded for this section. But my goal here is I'm going to show you what, what happens when you make this stuff. This isn't a really, okay, you start with some raw stuff and voila, here's a nice finished beautiful model. There's a lot of filing that goes in, there's a lot of hand detail, and I want to show you everything that happens 
This is a learning experience for everybody. It's definitely a learning experience for me. And if I have accidents and stuff, I'm going to show it. If I have to remake a part, I'm going to show it. Uh, nobody's perfect. And part of my goal here is to show you that if I can do this, I think anybody can. And uh, we're going to have fun doing it. So hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, we can, hope you're looking forward to part three, where we start on the soul plate. Thanks for watching.